Good evening everyone and tonight I'm going to be reviewing a film called Salo or 120 Days of Sodom and um, this is kind of in keeping with my Halloween movies. Um, it's not really a horror film but um, it's pretty shocking and disturbing as a film and it's um, very psychologically disturbing as well. Um, I don't even know what genre this film really fits into. It, like, it's not a horror film, it's not really a thriller either. Um, I don't know, I would describe it as basically a really black kind of comedy drama film. Uh, the content of the film is horrific, but the film itself is not done like a horror film at all. It's very straightforward and um, very serious. Uh, just to, well, serious for the most part, except for some humor in it. <laughs> But um, just to warn you, this is not a film for everyone. Um, if you're curious about it and you want to check it out, uh, it's considered by many people to be the most shocking uh, film ever made. So it's got a lot of stuff in it that you might find offensive if you're, if you're really sensitive to that kind of thing. Um, I don't expect films to live up to my moral standards, so I wasn't you know, that bothered by it, but it is a very disturbing film. And it's not a film I think I'll ever be watching again. It's one of those films that you kind of see it once and that's really all you need. So, um, let's talk about it. Uh, a Serbian... Uh, sorry, I was getting confused with a Serbian film and Solo because I saw both of those at the same time. I'm going to review a Serbian film next, so, um, but let's talk about Solo. Um, Solo is based on the book by the Marquis de Sade. Who, um, you know, but it's it's set in more modern times, like World War II, uh, around that time period, maybe a little before or after World War II, I'm not quite sure. But it's a, basically about these uh, three sadistic, you know, r bastards that, um, they're very rich and they live in this, um, this uh, beautiful villa. And um, they decide it would be a lot of fun to kidnap a bunch of teenagers and um, subject, subject them to all kinds of humiliation, um, seg sexual degradation, and torture for the next 120 days. And that's basically what the movie is about. Uh, the movie starts with them going around um, finding different children that they, um, well, teenagers that they want to capture. And uh, they're quite picky about it. You know, they only pick people that are very beautiful looking and um, have perfect bodies and all that kind of stuff so I guess they have pretty high standards in that regard. Um, the The film is totally in Italian. Um, you can watch it either with subtitles or with English dub which is how I watched it. Um, even though the content of this film is very disturbing, it's actually very beautifully shot. Uh, the cinematography, uh, the look of the film, uh, the musical score, it's all scored with classical music, so um, it's a very well-crafted film. Uh, a lot of, you know, effort obviously went into making it. Um, I think the director's name was Fusilini or something, I, I can't remember his name. It's, he's got a, like, but um, he was well known for his subversive filmmaking and um, this was the most shocking film he ever did, so um, uh, so basically, yeah, they kidnap all these uh, teenagers, children, um, and bring them to their villa. And uh, they make up all these rules for them that they have to obey, otherwise they get severely punished. Um, they basically are allowed to have sex with these kids anytime they want to. Um, the movie includes uh, gay scenes, you know, um, there's all kinds of stuff with, okay, if you're sensitive, beware, but there's stuff with human excrement. There's a whole banquet involving human excrement, which is pretty much the grossest thing I've ever seen in my life. Uh, and, uh, and basically the routine is every morning they have um, one of their friends who's a lifelong prostitute come down and they all sit together in this big room in the villa. And uh, they... Uh, the prostitute basically talks about all her adventures as a prostitute, all the different people she slept with and the different things they did. And as they all listen, um, the the guys are allowed to do whatever they want to these, you know, these teenagers as they're listening. So they, they take them into the room and do different sexual acts with them or um, 
There's one guy who likes to have people like urinate on his face. Um, there's another guy who's into eating, you know, poop. Uh, uh, you're probably wondering why I even wanted to see this movie. Um, I was just very curious about it because I've heard a lot of things about it from other movie reviewers that I follow on YouTube. So, um, and uh, about you know, the, the the debate was split down the middle. Half the people think it's a masterpiece, and half the people think it's just an absolute piece of subver subversive trash. Uh, to be frankly honest, I'm not sure if I like it or not. I'm kind of in the middle. Like, like <laughs> I can, I'll acknowledge that it's a very well-made film, but the content is um, quite graphic. Um, they torture these uh, teenagers in all kinds of different ways. Uh, the teenagers, by the way, are naked throughout the film. Um, yeah, they really don't wear any clothes. Uh, at one point, just to give you an example, they they force the the kids to crawl around on their knees like they're dogs and beg for food. They have to like wolf and like put their hands up and all this stuff. And uh, yeah, um, I think what the movie does really well is it kind of shows <clears throat> how far human nature can slip when you're in a situation like that, like that time period, World War II, which was what pretty much the darkest time period in human history. There was a lot of ego, there was a lot of insensitivity, um, there was a lot of, um, you know, just uh, total disregard for human life. Um, basically these three guys that are doing all these stuff to these teenagers, um, you know, it's... It, <laughs> What's interesting is the way they're doing it is very classy in a strange way. They don't curse and use like really derogatory terms and stuff. Like all the stuff they're doing is described in quite beautiful language, like the language of the Marquise de Sade. Um, but what they're describing is pretty grotesque and uh, sexually perverted and horrible. So and that was what was interesting about the Marquis de Sade. His writing is quite beautiful, and yet the subject matter is very uh, lurid and strange. Uh, lots of bondage, S and M, you know, strange fetishes, um, torture, rape, sodomy, all that kind of stuff. But it's so beautifully described in the film that you're, it just makes it all the more kind of disturbing. And just the fact that all this is happening against such a beautiful setting, um, like this villa, is incredibly beautiful. It's a work of art. Um, but yeah, so basically they go through all these different circles, just like in the Marquis de Sade novel, there's a cir circle of crap, you know, poop, whatever, there's a circle of blood, and then by the very end there's like the circle of torture, um, which is probably the most shocking part in the film. It's not the most, uh, like, grotesque, but it is definitely the most shocking, uh, the scene at the end where they basically kill them all um, but it's done in a very voyeuristic way um, like it doesn't you don't hear anyone screaming you don't like the torture is shown through windows kind of like you feel like you're a voyeur kind of observing it through a window so it doesn't graphically do close-ups on any of that or whatever but it's still quite disturbing um, um yeah so I don't know how much more I can say about this film. Um, like I said, it's not a film, definitely not a film for everyone. Um, all the actors are very good in it. Uh, you know, the the teenagers are all really good actors in it. All the people playing the, the characters uh, are quite good as well. Uh, good for considering that they're playing total scumbags. They're playing totally sadistic, evil people in the film, but they are very good actors, so. Uh, it really is, like, a very well-made film. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's not cheap-looking or anything like that. It's not, it doesn't look trashy, like, just the way it's filmed and framed and all that. Um... And as far as being a tribute to the Marquis de Sade, uh, his novel, 120 Days of Sodom, I think it succeeds quite well at that, even though it's set in a different time period. So if you're a fan of the Marquis de Sade's writings, um, and you've never seen it put to film, and you know, trust me, you've never seen it put to film in quite this way. I mean, there's been other films inspired by the Marquis de Sade, I suppose, like 
Quills and some other movies, but this film really just goes all the way with it. Like it doesn't sugarcoat anything. It doesn't pull back. Um, it's very much in your face uh, and what it is. You know, it's basically a study of human depravity. You know, in a very dark time period in human history. So, and I think that's brilliant. Setting in you know during the World War II era for that reason because it was such a dark time period. So. Um, well, I'll just end the review by saying that if you're sensitive, you probably will not want to see this film. Um, there's things in the film that just cannot be ever unseen, <laughs> no matter how hard you might try to purge it out of your mind. Um, and like I said, it's a type of film that you really only want to watch once. <laughs> it does not require multiple viewings. Um, well, unless you want to watch it more than once, then whatever floats your boat be my guess. But once was more than enough for me um, and yeah I'm not sure once again I'm not sure if I like the film or not but at the very least I will acknowledge that it's an extremely well made film and and uh, you know well lit brilliant cinematography amazing musical score great acting all that it's just the subject matter that's you know something a lot of people would not want to see so uh, so I leave it in your hands. Uh, go look for it if you want to, or, you know, don't go look for it. Like, after everything I've said, you know, I'm sure a lot of you will be totally turned off by this movie. Um, but I'm just reviewing it because, you know, we're around, it's around Halloween, and I just wanted to do, you know, review some more subversive types of films. Um, and probably next I'll be reviewing um, uh, a Serbian film. So... That's my review on Salo, or 120 Days of Sodom. Have a good night and a happy Halloween, and I'll see you later. Good night.